Personally, I struggle with doing research in medical school. What's going on everyone? I'm Rohan. I'm now a fifth year medical student at Cardiff University. And today we're going to break down what forms of research you can do whilst at university and whilst in medical school and how to go about doing those forms of research. So sit back, relax, take some notes and let's get into it. So firstly, I thought I'd break down what my experience was like doing research in medical school. And personally, I'm not going to lie, I found it really tough. And it wasn't because there aren't many opportunities because there are tons. I just found it was really difficult to keep on top of it, especially with placement and then going back and forth with supervisors and I only really found it feasible to do research in medical school if the university set out a period or a chunk of time for us to do the research ourselves which I will go over soon. For reference I was part of Cures which is the Cardiff University Research Society and whilst I was part of that I helped run a lot of events for research and I even participated in a couple of research projects myself through either data collection or through just survey feedback. But when it actually came to doing my own research project I found I could only do it if I had a massive chunk of time to do it for. And then if you watched my previous videos, which I hope you have, then you would know that I just completed a systematic review as part of my intercalated degree in population medicine. So how do you actually get involved with research in medical school? So most medical schools follow a similar curriculum, but just for reference, I'm going to go through Cardiff University because that's obviously where I have been at medical school for the past nearly six years. A student selected component. This is a specific chunk of time, which is usually about six weeks, which the medical school take out for you to concentrate on academia. In these periods, you often go through a speciality of your choice and go with a supervisor who's already pretty pretty good at research in their field. Then you do some form of academic research with them. That can range from a literature review, an audit, reflection or a specific research study which you will produce and then at the end of the block you submit it to your supervisor to the university, it gets marked and then if you perform a proper research paper or an audit then you can present it at MDT meetings, presentations, conferences, previous to the year 2022, poster presentations and other forms of research like publications counted towards your F1 ranking and gave you F1 points and helped with your job application. However, now the only thing that counts is your SJT score and your medical school ranking, just to keep that in the back of your mind. So I made a video regarding my SSC a while ago, but just to recap, I worked with the ENT surgeon and performed a research study comparing the attention span of students in a typical 45 minute lecture compared to a shortened condensed version of a 15 minute lecture. I compared the groups and obviously the 15 minute group and had a significantly greater attention span. Now, although it might seem super obvious, there was wasn't really much research on it when I looked at it anyway. So it goes to show that sometimes research topics can be on the most obvious thing because obviously people in a 15 minute group are going to have more attention than people in a 45 minute group. But it also shows that the most obvious things just don't have enough research around them. So number two is an audit. So a clinical audit is used to evaluate how well current practice is being carried out and ask the question, are we doing the right thing and are we doing it in the best way? In comparison, a research project focuses on finding new information and exploring the best ways to do things and ask the question, what is the right thing and what is the best way to do it. A clinical audit is usually done in a healthcare setting and it never involves experimental treatment or a placebo because it's to do with current treatment. So you're probably wondering why a clinical audit is important for medical students. So I'm going to break that down for you. So audits are expected to be done as part of a continuous process of learning as part of a doctor or a medical student or nurses or any healthcare professional and it's essential because it highlights the failings and the issues which are to do with the current practice that you're using. The need for clinical audits are so essential that they're actually compulsory for all junior doctors to do. The audit cycle runs through five steps, which is basically how you complete an audit once you identify the problem or the issue. Step number one, set the criteria and define your standards. Uh, these are often nice guidance. Number two is, is that you're going to collect your data. You're going to figure out what is needed to be collected and you're going to decide whether it's going to be done prospectively, which is going to be in the future. So you're going to follow a group of patients or retrospectively, which is where the data is already available to you as the events have happened in the past. And you're also going to determine the relevant sample size, which is the number of participants you want to involve in the study to make a proper conclusion. Number three is that you're going to compare the performance against the criteria, basically analyzing your data. Number four, you're going to implement change. Basically, you're going to present the results to the MDT. You're going to develop a plan of action. And then number five is that you're going to repeat the audit cycle. After the intervention has taken place, you're going to collect the new data and determine whether an impact was made at all. So there are a few different types of audits. Different audits are based on the different aspects of patient care that you want to look at. For example, smoking behaviors of patients. So the structure of care, this refers to the resources which are required. Required. Basically, how available are smoking cessation clinics in your local community? Number two is a process of care. And this refers to the way that the practitioners have formed decisions for users. For example, the waiting times in between appointments. And number three, outcome of care. You're going to measure the response of the intervention in the patients. For example, how many patients stop smoking after a year of having these smoking cessation clinics? So you probably heard of the term closed loop, but why is it important to have a closed loop? So closing the loop is a term used in audits, which means that the audit has come 
come to a completion. Basically whether the action plan was implemented and whether data was collected and then re-evaluated. It's really important because it shows whether or not the audit and the action plan actually works. So how should you get involved with an audit as a medical student? Firstly, just ask your junior doctors and your F1s or your F2s because they're most likely the ones that are going to be doing it. And then discuss with your MDT whilst you're in placement, whilst you're in the hospital. As students, the easiest method to start is through data collection rather than acting as the audit lead. Once you're an F1 doctor, usually within the first four months, you'll definitely have a chance to be the audit lead and you'll have a supervisor to guide you through the process. Don't worry if you don't even get it done in med school. So another good way of getting into research is through an intercalated degree. So it's basically taking a year out and doing a completely separate degree like I did with population medicine. Psst, look at my other vids for that. You'll most likely do your research project as a dissertation and you'll either get the choice to, to make the title yourself or they'll give you one instead. And if you're lucky, and I mean really lucky, you'll get it published. Another way you can get into research is through joining a research society. Like I mentioned previously, I was part of Cures, which is the Cardiff University Research Society. I helped host a variety of events going through the academic foundation program and even got the opportunity of participating in a bunch of research myself as a data collector or just through completing surveys. So another really interesting way of getting into research, which is pretty smart if you ask me, is doing a letter to the editor. So a letter to the editor is a short communication about a topic which interests the reader within a journal and it's usually in response to a research article. So the journals to consider include the BMC Medical Education and Education for Primary Care. So a short 350 to 500 word article can be submitted, which highlights the topics in the question paper or research paper which were missed by the original article. You use around three to four references so it's not big at all and then make sure to include your own experiences for example as a fifth year medical student to give you more leeway on how this research article was important for you. In a sense it gives you an opportunity to critique a research paper and add extra value to that research paper from your own perspective. And once again if you're lucky enough then you can get it published. So basically that was a quick breakdown on how to get into research at medical school but don't panic if you haven't done anything yet. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as usual. Go follow my TikTok because I post there basically all the time. Once again, thank you for watching. Let's go.